Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about systems of linear equations. This should be review, so let's go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is systems with two equations and two variables. Okay, there's really three methods to solve, so first we're going to start by solving graphically. Okay, so to solve graphically, you need to graph each one of these equations. Okay, so I'm probably going to use the x and y intercept method. Okay, for the first equation, I would get that my x intercept is 4. and my y-intercept is 2. Okay, then for the second equation, just for variety, I'll put it in slope-intercept form. Okay, so my y-intercept is negative 1 half, and then my slope is 3 fourths. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, and then I'm going to draw my line for L1. It's not very straight. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my line for L2. Oops. There you go. All right, so here's all my solutions for the first equation. There's all my solutions for the second equation. So the only point that solves them both is the point of intersection here, which looks like the point two comma one. So that would be my final answer. Okay, now let's look at the two algebraic methods for solving these. Okay, so the first method is substitution. Okay, now the basis of this method is isolating one variable in one of the equations and then substituting that expression into the other equation. So I'm going to substitute in for y my expression 2x plus 4. Okay, now I have a single equation with one variable, just x, and I'm going to solve for x. Okay. Oops. Negative 11. Okay, so x is negative 1. Okay, now remember when you're solving this way, you still need to solve for the other variable, so I'm going to plug back in to get the value for y. Okay, and my final answer should be written as an ordered pair. Okay, the ordered pair negative 1, comma, 2. Okay. All right, so the second method to solve algebraically is either called combination, okay, or elimination. Okay, so both of these terms refer to the same method, okay. Okay, so in this method, you want to 
um, make one of the variables have opposite coefficients so that when you add them together, they'll cancel out, okay? So for example, you would want the coefficients of x to be 6 and negative 6, or the coefficients of y to be 15, negative 15 and positive 15, right? You're going to choose the least common multiple of these two numbers. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate x, so I'm going to multiply my first equation times 3, okay? So this would give me 6x minus 9y equals 9, okay? And I'm going to multiply my second equation times 2, and that will give me negative 6x plus 10y equals negative 12. Okay, and you can see now we have the coefficients 6 and negative 6, so when we add these two together, 6 plus negative 6 is 0, negative 9y plus 10y is 1y, okay, and 9 plus negative 12 is negative 3, okay, and that allows you to solve for one of the variables, okay. Then I'm going to plug this value back in. You can plug it into either one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one, okay. So I'm going to do the first one, okay, and that gives me my ordered pair negative 3, negative 3, okay? All right, so now that we've reviewed those methods for systems of two equations and two variables, let's review some vocabulary. Okay, so if a system has any solutions, we call it consistent. Okay, the opposite of that okay, is that the system is inconsistent. Okay, so if a solution has one solution or many solutions, it is consistent, okay? If a system has no solutions, we call it inconsistent, okay? Okay, if you could rewrite a system with fewer equations, we call that dependent. Okay, if that's not the case, okay, we say it is independent. Okay. So let's look at how this looks for a system of two equations and two variables. Okay, so if you have a system that is inconsistent, okay, what that means is there's no solutions at all. So when you look at the graph, that means there's no, oop, little cat, um, that means that there's no intersection of the two lines, okay? So that would mean that those two lines are parallel, okay? An example of a system that's inconsistent would look like this. Okay, you can see 
that that system doesn't have any solutions. Sorry, cat. Okay. Right, it's not possible for x plus y to be both 3 and 5. Okay, so that means there's no solutions to this system. Okay. Little cat. Okay. Now, what about a dependent system? What does that look like? Okay, so if you have a dependent system, okay, it means one of the equations can be rewritten as the other equation, okay? So in terms of what the graph looks like, you would draw the two, the first line, okay? And then when you go to graph this first line, it goes right over the same line, okay? So you can see a dependent two by two system because there's only one line on the graph. Okay, now when you look at the set of equations, okay, you'll see that one is a multiple of the other. Okay, now for this type of system, you have infinite solutions. Okay, and it's all the points on the line that are solution. Okay, all right. So let's do an example of a system with three equations and three variables. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do is pick out a method for solving this, okay? So when you think about using a graphical method, okay, you would have to graph something that has three variables, okay? So that means you're making a three-dimensional graph. We probably don't really wanna do that, okay? So we're gonna use an algebraic method. Now, if you're gonna use substitution for a system of three equations and three variables, you really have to have some equations that don't have all three variables. All three equations have all three variables. So we have to use combinations or elimination, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is combine two of these, okay? So that we have two equations, okay, combined that are gonna eliminate one of the variables, okay? So I'm gonna take my first equation and I'm gonna multiply it by negative two. Okay, so I would get negative 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 2. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring my second equation over. Okay, now when I add these two together, that means that my x terms are going to cancel out. Okay. Oops, that's a z equals five. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with a different pair of equations, okay? And it's super important that you eliminate the same variable, okay? So because we eliminated x here, we have to pick a different pair of equations, either one and three or two and three, and we still have to eliminate x, okay? So I'm gonna pick one and three, and I'm gonna multiply the first one by negative three. Okay, so that would give me negative three x plus six y minus three z equals three. Okay, and then I'm just gonna copy my third equation. Okay, and I'm gonna add these two together to eliminate x. So these do add to zero, this gives me nine y minus 5z equals 13. Okay, 
So now you can see I have minus 5z and minus 5z, so I think those are going to be the easiest to eliminate. Okay, so I'm going to label this as equation 4, and this one is equation 5. Okay, so I'm going to take equation 4, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. Okay, so that would give me minus 5y plus 5z equals negative 5. Okay, and then I'm just going to add equation 5. So 9y minus 5z equals 13. Okay, now when I add these together, this gives me 4y. Those cancel as intended. Okay, and this is going to be 8. And then I can divide both sides by 4. Once I have solved for one of the variables, okay, I'm going to plug back into either equation 4 or 5 with this 2 so that I can solve for one of the other variables. Okay, so if you remember what equation 4 looked like, I have 5y minus 5z equals 5. Okay, and I'm going to plug in y equals 2. Okay. So that would give me 10, that'll be negative 5, so z equals 1. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is plug into one of the original equations. I'm going to choose equation 1, which was x minus 2y plus z equals negative 1, to solve for the last variable. Okay. Okay, so this is going to give me x equals 2. Okay. And then I'm going to write my solution as an ordered triple. 2, 2, 1. Okay. All right. Let's do one more example like that. Okay, now because the first equation only has x and y, the easiest way to solve this is going to be to combine equation 2 and 3 and try to eliminate z. Okay, so I don't really want to add fractions here. I don't want fractions when I'm solving a linear equation, so I'm going to multiply this by 2. Okay, so that would give me 4x plus y oops, times 2, so that would be 2y minus z equals zero. Okay, now I can see that I have minus z here and I have plus z here, so I'm just gonna copy my second equation. Okay, and then I'm gonna add these two together. Okay, so I add these two, I get six x, add those two, I get four y, these cancel, okay, and I get five. Okay, so now I want to eliminate, I have two equations with two variables. Okay, so I'm just going to use regular elimination. So I'm going to take my first equation and multiply it by 4. So I would get 4x minus 4y equals 0. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy this equation, equation 4. So 6x plus 4y equals 5. Okay, now when I add these two together, I get 10x equals 5, so x is 1 half. Okay, now I'm going to pick either of the two equations that only have x and y to plug back into, so I'll just use the first one. So x minus y equals 0, so that would be Okay, and this would give me y equals one half. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is plug in both of these into the second or third equation to get z. 
Okay, so I'm going to use my second equation, which was 2x plus 2y plus z equals 5. Okay, so 1 plus 1, okay. Okay, which would give me z equals 3. Okay, so my final answer would be 1 half, 1 half, 3. Okay, all right, so that's it for the review. Next time we're going to talk about a quicker method to solve these equations of three variables and three equations. Okay, so tune in for that.